What is an Ansible playbook? A step-by-step -step guide inside the Ansible playbook terminology. I will show you a live demo with some simple Ansible code. I'm Luca Berton and welcome to today's episode of Ansible Pilot. So, an Ansible playbook is uh, the blueprint for your automation. The Ansible playbook enables you the execution of any, again and again, operation in a specified order. It's like a recipe book for someone who likes the, to cook a cake. Every ingredient needs to be added in a specific order at a particular moment of the execution. The code is human-readable in a YAML format, a well-known, easy-to-read coding format. Every line is coded in the Ansible language that is changed a little bit here over here, but not a lot. But the principles are always the same. Like all programming language, you can declare variable, include other file, exclude action on condition, and repeat with loops. Other particular action called handlers execute only when another task is performed. You can execute your Ansible playbook using the Ansible Dash playbook command line utility included in any Ansible installation. When the execution is successful, you obtain a green result, otherwise a failure with a relative error message. But let's move forward to demo time, a step-by-step -step guide inside the Ansible playbook anatomy. Let's go! First of all, open your favorite text editor. Could be anything from the command line to some UI one. I'm using Sublime Text, but the Ansible recommendation is VS Code. So a YAML document is basically a text document and the only things important are the three dash in the beginning. Then we are starting the syntax and be very mindful about space. So first instruction is a dash and the name example playbook. Here we are. We are writing a playbook. Then there are two spaces and every which means that every instruction are under this name. So hosts is only the name of a target host. In our case, all means all our Ansible inventory. But the matey part is the task list. What to do against this host? This host. Again, we are going to declare a name. This is very is a bad practice. Always declare a name. So, for example, let's print a variable. And now we need to declare a variable. How to declare a variable? Well, we use a vars statement, and uh, you can choose the name that you want. Uh, just avoid uh, the numbers, the dots, as usual, and uh, spacing name variable. So, for example, my var is a, is a valid variable name, and example text is just a string uh, uh, that I invented. If you omit uh, the double quote, Ansible thinks that is a string, but it's a good habit. Um, okay, so under the task named print var, we need to use an Ansible module. Ansible module is what create the action, and the full name is sensible.builtin, this is a collection name, and dot .debug is the module name. Uh, debug is quite special because it printed out uh, some messages on screen. You can use a var and direct the name of a variable, or maybe you can use the more standard form with a full message. So, for example, you can specify some text before, for example, value, and then uh, say that you would like to use uh, the value of a variable my var for the for using the variable name, you need to specify the double brackets. Here we are. 
we are concatenating uh, some text value with a, with some string value my var. Cool, isn't it? In this way, you can only change the variable and you obtain a different text on screen. Yes, I know, this is a very simple example. You can complicate as much as you want. For example, imagine that uh, there is a, a username, there is a, some text that you would like to upload, there is some configuration file. This we can do later on. A very important statement is also the conditional because uh, we are able to take decision based on uh, uh, one, uh, one condition. So again, for example, let's suppose we are going to display this uh, message example condition and we would like to display only when some condition is verified. So for example, my bool. So my bool is a simple boolean variable that, uh, like every boolean, could be true or false. So for example, let me set to true. In this way, we are going to see the message on screen. If you want, if you set to false, the execution will display one skipped status. So again, what qualify a complete full language? For example, we are missing the loop statement. In a loop statement, you are cycling against uh, a list. For example, let's define uh, a list of cities, a city that I would like to visit. So let's list it out, for example, New York. In this way, I'm omitting, omitting the double quote, so it's still a string, and Paris. The string could be more long, so for example, imagine a list of user, a list of directory, whatever pop up in your mind. Uh, again, let's, de let's uh, uh, define a name, print cities. It's always a good habit to define a name. And under this name, you can see there is a two spaces all the time. I'm using ansible.builtin.debug, again, for printing out on screen. This time we are using the var parameter. This is a parameter of the module. And uh, okay, no, I'm, I will explain later. And for a loop, we are using the loop statement and we need to specify which the list of item. We can specify directly here or we can use the value of a variable cities. Here we are. In this way, we are cycling against all the single item and we have this special uh, variable called item that we can use when a loop statement is enabled. In this way, we are going to cycle against uh, the element of uh, a list. It's pretty cool, no? Okay, great. So we are able to use a single statement, we are using to you. We are able to use a condition and we are able to use a loop. What else will be handful in an Ansible playbook? Well, there's this very interesting tool that is called Handler. A handler is uh, invoked only when uh, one uh, of the operation moves to the change status. So let's suppose we have this handler that is named uh, Reload, for example. Uh, it's very useful when you need to restart or reload the service, for example. But we are going to display only one message on screen. So again, using ansible.builtin.debug module. And for example, let's display, suppose to display a message like uh, example handler. Cool. So in this way, we define a, a, and all the time, remember that there must be one empty line at the end of the file. Not two, only one. Not zero, not two, not more than, only one line, one exactly line. How to trigger the handler? Well, you need to specify the notify in the task that we would like to, um, to execute. So, for example, if a print vars uh, change something on the target host, uh, the handler will be executed. If change nothing, the handler will be not executed. Do you get the concept? Cool. So now we are able 
we just had a quick overview about the Ansible language nowadays. Uh, if you come in some, if you have the opportunity to see some old code, probably you don't see the declaration of the Ansible collection, so Ansible.builtin will be omitted. But after Ansible 2.9 is quite uh, mandatory, so always is a good habit to write all the uh, collection. So Ansible built in dot debug, not only debug, and uh, these are the main concept. You are able to execute a single task, you are able to execute some condition, you are able to loop against some list of variables, and you are able also to declare some uh, string, boolean, and list. The more you deep dive into the language and the more will become more uh, useful for you. So imagine that you substitute the bug with other model more useful for you, for example, for installing software, for uh, uh, restarting service, for creating users. You can do a thousand of different operations and you can connect to cloud service and whatever. So Ansible is very powerful. Now, let's move on to the terminal to see this code in action. Are you excited? Welcome to my terminal. How to open a terminal? Well, I, this is a MacBook, so I just look for terminal. If you are on Linux, there are plenty of terminal applications. On Windows, a command line. Okay, so let me show you that uh, this is the same file that we typed in the editor. And I add an extra file that is called Ansible Inventory. Basically, I have a target machine. If you are using localhost, you need to add also Ansible underscore connection equal local, local. Otherwise, uh, Ansible get mad. If you are testing on target machine or virtual machine, just specify the hostname or IP address. So Ansible is successfully installed in this machine. We can verify with Ansible dash dash version and how to execute Ansible Playbook? Using Ansible-Playbook command line. As you can see, this is the latest available at the moment. So what parameter we need to specify? Well, dash E for inventory and the name of our Ansible Playbook. In my case, example.yml. We got interesting result. We got our text printed on screen, you can see the concatenation of value and example, and we got also an error, which means that uh, the cities is undefined. Very interesting error. Now we can deep dive and uh, fix this in our editor. All the time you got some error when you write a code. Back on my editor, let's troubleshoot together the cities fatal error. So, uh, we are in the loop, we are using a variable called cities, and this variable returns the undefined status. But we define the city here, in the top, and it's called my cities. Did you get the error? Yeah, we forgot the my prefix before cities. This is a simple type of error, and it's very trivial. And so basically, we forgot the my cities is the variable name to loop against the city. Well, it's very it more often than ever. Uh, let me switch also boolean to false. In this way, we are going to see that this the second task will be skipped. I mean, the conditional task. It's very often when you code you forgot something or you do a little mistake. It, it happens, simply happens. So just learn how to read the error and how to remediate. Another thing, remember always to save your file before moving back to the terminal. Back on our terminal, now let's execute again the new Ansible playbook. So Again, ansible-playbook is the command line utility dash e my inventory file and example yml. Yeah, you can also arrow up. We got uh, the three tasks executed. So first task, display the variable on screen, value, example test. 
Second is the conditional, this time is false and we got a skipping status, as expected, and we have also the list of our cities, yes, we have a New York and Paris, cool. On the last line is a playbook recap, we got a 3 OK status and 1 skipped, yes, I think it's a great journey, now you can move forward on your automation, and you know the playbook. Now you know what an Ansible playbook is and uh, how to use the basic statements. So you can move your first steps into the Ansible automation and automate more of your workflow. At the beginning will be probably challenging, I know, and this, you need to be very careful about the syntax, about the spaces, but the more you get used to Ansible, the more everything becomes natural. Thank you for watching, I hope this video was useful for you and I wish you good luck in your automation journey. Let's have a catch up on the next lesson and have a great day! Bye!